Theme song. So you want to take to the stars and race around the galaxy in Space Haven, do ya? Well, slow down for a second and check out these tips that we have for you. Before we dive into the tips, I want to say a big shout out to these people here uh, for all of their wonderful comments that they have left throughout this whole series. Uh, most of these tips are actually just things that people have told me about, so thanks for all the free content. And thanks to your help, because now uh, that has really lowered the frequency with which my crew uh, craps their pants. I'm not sure. I think Irrational might be in the sick bay because, uh, because of crapping her pants, but we're, we're, we're not sure. Now, this list is just going to be some sort of general tips, some fun things that I've discovered while playing the game. If you want to have every system broken down and you want to really get into the details of every part of Space Haven, then please check out Green Beef's playlists on uh, his channel. He has gone in-depth on all the systems, will explain everything you ever needed to know to become a pro at Space Haven, not just me at Space Haven. For our purposes to get started, we're going to go with an abandoned mining station. Uh, and that's because it gives you a little platform to get started, and then you also can make your own uh, ship from scratch. So we're going to name this uh, universe the Hot Tips Universe. When you're setting up the difficulty, you're going to notice a bunch of options. Peaceful, Builder, Medium, Harsh. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. You can kind of look through everything and, and see what you're going to get. But you can also edit all of these values. So you can say, like, maybe we want a big old crew here. From there, it's just a simple matter of picking your crew. Now, this crew looks pretty good. You can see here what they used to be before the apocalypse. A telemarketer, a couple of navigators, computer programmer, and a florist. Very useful. Over here, I can see my team skills, and this tells me what the top level of skill is in each thing. So this team looks really awesome because I've got everything covered to a level of three, which means there's somebody who's got a level three weapons, somebody who's got a level three shields, all sorts of options here. But little do we know, this is actually a very bad team to start the game with, and that's because, check it out, Flora here has a uh, skill of three in construction, but if you go through everyone, you're gonna see Filbert has zero construction, zero construction, zero, and zero. That means if they have zero, that means they can't perform that function. So you're gonna wanna look out for that in your team. You almost have to write it down or something, because this is very good to tell you if you have any weak spots overall, uh, but it's not gonna tell you that I only have one person who's gonna be able to work on the ship. So this means that all four of these people here aren't gonna be able to build hull sections. They're not gonna be able to build facilities or even couches. It's all going to be up to Flora to get us started. So make sure that you've got at least a couple of ones and some twos in construction as well. And if you want to do that, let's go to Kason here. And uh, you're going to want to look at what else they have that's maxed out that is a weak point. Maybe make sure you have a doctor. So let's make sure we have at least a one in construction and a good doctor here. So uh, you can just roll again. So now we have a three, but no doctor. Uh, one and no doctor. Now we have a three and a three. So this is a builder doctor and very useful. But as you can see, now botany is only two. So you're going to have to do a lot of balancing to make sure you've got exactly what you need. But if you do it right, you're going to be set up for the stars. Once you get started, you will notice that you have a certain size to build your ship. It's a pretty big square, so you can build anything there. I like it. But what if you want to lay a different foundation? Well, that's easy enough. All you do is go up here to add a new ship or build a new ship. You're going to click that, and you're going to see your, pre your current foundation. And so you just want to drag that over to that little trash icon, get rid of it. And then it's just a matter of picking uh, whatever sort of shape or foundation you'd like. So I like this long one to make a long ship. So hit create. And here we are. Now you can sketch to your heart's content. So something like this looks pretty good. And then we'll put some wings on it. And then uh, there. There we go. This looks like a good ship. The next set of tips is my favorite. It's useful hotkeys. Hit the B key to bring up your build menu. 
If you're trying to look around your ship and you want to see it in a slightly different view, go ahead and hit the Alt key to toggle the walls. It might be a good way to look around your ship like this, uh, but maybe not as fun to look at. So if you want to see all that eye candy, just hit Alt again to bring the walls up. And then hit Tab to bring up your roof view. Ooh, look at those super cool ships. You can also toggle the R key to bring up your um, your view modes. So that one was temperature, and uh, that's how I can tell that, oh, this part of the ship needs another thermal wall regulator. All right, it looks like Garibay is just about finished putting the finishing touches on this uh, room. This is gonna be a nice room for maybe like a high ranking officer, but if I hit the Alt key, I can see that the walls kind of look only okay. Uh, the floor looks kind of cold. So let's go into the uh, build menu here and then we'll go edit and uh, we'll click on style. Now this is going to let us cycle through some different wall looks as well as floor looks. Um, so you can see the floor down here. Let's go with this one. And the floor, it took away the grid with the same kind of floor and it looks kind of technical. Sort of like an engineering bay would be good. You'll notice if I keep clicking though, it'll cycle through the stuff on the walls. If we try this one, it kind of has like an old, like original Star Trek vibe. And I like that console right there, but it's only okay for a room. Um, we can try this yellow one here. And uh, see, like right away, I like this one. I like the options. It kind of feels like the fifth element a little bit. You'll notice there that the floor changes. If you can see the icon below, you can see the floor underneath the wall style. So this means it's going to change the wall and the floor at the same time. Uh, if you want to mix and match, you'd want to pick one without a floor icon below it. So then let's pick, uh, so if we pick this red one here, we will keep the floor the same, but we'll change the wall to kind of look like that, which I kind of like. Looks sort of like Dune now, which I don't mind. So if you can see this little one by one step that I've done here and then uh, down at the other end as well, uh, this doesn't seem to create a lot of extra room for your the rooms inside the ship. But if you go back out of this and just look at your ship in ship mode, you'll see, look at that. It creates a nice angled section of hull. So this isn't a gameplay tip so much as it's a tip to give your ships that extra spacey look. Another small tip to keep in mind is that doors are also vents. So this little button here down here, you can click it on or off to close or open the vents. And this is very helpful in the early game uh, when you have a nice compact ship, so that's good. Uh, and you don't want to build vents everywhere. Vents are good if you don't have doors nearby and you want to keep the flow of things going and you don't want, you know, uh, smoke getting in or out. Um, but they cost one infra block every time you want to build one vent. So why not spend the one infra block on a door and then close the vents on the door if you want to, uh, you know, keep any gases in or out. So take a look at my uh, sort of manufacturing bay. This is the, the main sort of engineering area. A lot of these things say uh, enclosed within walls and a spacesuit door to ensure a safe working environment. Uh, and that's because a lot of these can either catch fire or release uh, horrible hazardous gases, um, which is good uh, if you're gonna have lots of gas scrubbers around uh, like this one here. Uh, but what's gonna make it way safer is if you have a spacesuit door. Now, um, I'll show you how to set one up here, but I will say that a lot of people opt not to use them and just to try to put out the fires right away uh, as soon as they are set uh, because the spacesuits will slow your workers down. Uh, but I like using it because it'll put out any fires that are gonna start. So you click on wall, go to the spacesuit door, and you'll notice that arrow and that yellow line up top. So just kind of line that yellow line up where you wanna build the walls and the arrow sort of gives you an idea of like, okay, on this side of the door, you should have a spacesuit on. So we'll place that right here and then grab a wall and just line it up with that yellow line on top of the spacesuit door. And there you have it. Now everyone's gonna be wearing spacesuits when they enter this space and all the oxygen will slowly drain out of this area as long as it's sealed off, no vents or anything. And then you will have no fires able to start in this super secure part of your ship. Ah, uh, Rakesh and Kaiser, both having a good time taking some dumps. But this brings me to another tip. 
you can actually get extra resources from some of your facilities. So every five dumps, uh, there's going to be one unit of water made. Now, I don't know if this is sustainable, if you're going to get enough water out of this. I don't think so. But take a look at all the facilities around your ship and see what kind of knock-on effects and bonuses you might get from them. Resources are scarce in the early game, so uh, if you are having a trouble with smoke and you look at this gas scrubber, it's actually going to be one infra block, one tech block, and, you know, a bunch of tools to make. So it might be hard to come across tech blocks early on in the game, and uh, if you're like me, your people are very bad at cooking and constantly causing fires. But you're also worried about fires in your engineering wing. So uh, instead of building a bunch of gas scrubbers, you can click move and move the gas scrubber to the problem area. Especially if you don't want the discomfort debuff in the kitchen, you can just wait until there's a kitchen fire, put it out, and then move the gas scrubber into the kitchen. As long as it gets built and gets power, it will clear out all the smoke in the kitchen. So this is my brand new ship. Big fan of it so far. Uh, really liking how it's looking. But I've also got this red number up here. My mass seems to be off. This is actually something called my mass ratio. And that's actually being supported by these hyperdrives. Each hyperdrive supports about 1600 mass, which means I'm down about uh, one hyperdrive. Once they finish building it and loading it up with hyperdrive fuel, you'll actually find that while I could have been able to jump with just that low ratio, now that it's going to be in the green or fully supported mass, I'm actually going to be able to jump uh, for less hyperfuel than before. So I know it seems like, oh, I've got two hyperdrives. This is going to take more fuel. Well, it's actually kind of the opposite. I'll get a big fuel savings once this thing is loaded up. So here we go, Garibay's loading it up, and now I have a fully mass-supported ship and much better fuel economy. Barbora has a shotgun, Irrational has a shotgun, uh, Kaiser has an assault rifle, and Rakesh has a shotgun. So this uh, is actually looking like a pretty good away team to go and take a look at this derelict vessel. But what I can do is I can click and then shift click on all of those four people and then hit control one to create a control group. So control groups are, are great in this game because now all I have to do is hit one and then I can draft them all in one fell swoop. They drop what they're doing, so somebody's gonna have to pick that stuff up, but now I can load them into the ship and we're off. And when you're looking for a place to dock, you can either look for a hull breach and just click on a square nearby, uh, or you can dock them here at the airlock. If you want to dock them at the airlock, just know that you're only going to let one person in at a time and they kind of clump together. So if you're looking for a nice dynamic entrance with lots of people, like maybe four shuttles worth, which would be crazy, then you want to use that hull breach. But for now, this will work just fine. Get those bugs! So you've found this alien ship is full of nasty spiders. Well, it's time to deal with them. But if you don't want to just pile through one door and then get attacked and have not a really good firing line, all you need to do is right click on the walls and just blast them. You right click a few times, the wall will come down and that's gonna give all of your troops a better firing line, although they're also less covered. So keep that in mind. After you've finished successfully exploring a ship, this is sort of a tip just for me personally, you guys probably don't have this problem, but please remember to undraft your crew and undraft the shuttle. That way, they're going to be able to get to work salvaging everything, and you won't be wondering where your shuttle is. From there, you go into your tactical menu, and you pick transfer, and in this case, I like all this stuff, so I'm going to select all, and then I'm going to select which ship I want to send it to. In this case, I'm going to send it to this one, because, you know, their crew did all the work, so they should get all the spoils. Yay, spoils! If you want to make sure that your whole crew can work on the Derek vessel, or whoever you want, you're going to want to go up here to Crew Management, or hit Hotkey K. And here you're going to see your priorities, like this kind of RimWorld looking uh, menu over here. Uh, but you're also going to see your schedule and ships. And this is where you can set those boundaries. Boundaries are good! So here I have a couple of people that I don't want working on the derelict vessel. Uh, they stay home and do work at home, I guess. For some reason, I can't remember why. And then I have other people that are prioritizing going and getting that salvage, and other people that are just kind of allowed to work there. 
You can also set a number of other options here and there as well for what ships you want them to work on, uh, what ships you want them to call home, and all that stuff. Just take a look around this menu and then set those boundaries. Well, there you have it. Those are some Space Haven tips. And like I said, check out Green Beef's videos if you want to dive in in detail to all of the features that this wonderful game has. But I think my last two pieces of advice or bonus tips, if you will, are going to be these two. The first one being, think like a shark. And what I mean by that is just keep moving. Even in the early game, you're gonna be tempted to sit there and slowly salvage everything out of that derelict vessel. All the soft scrap, the tech scrap, the energy scrap. And sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's going to help you with your recycler. You can get some hull blocks and stuff like that and, and some uh, even a few energy rods. So that's good. Uh, but while you're doing that, remember you are burning through your energy rods and you are burning through your water and your carbon even. So uh, I would say keep moving from system to system and just take what you can from those ships and then mine what you can from the other, uh, from the local asteroids and then just get out of there. By doing that, you'll ensure that you don't run out of water uh, as easily as you could if you just sit and make sure you get every last drop of soft scrap from a ship. And then my final bonus tip is the following. Go to your local store and purchase a clock so you can put it on your wall right behind your computer screen. Uh, because if you are not careful uh, playing this game, you will lose track of entire days <laughs> because this game is just that addictive. So I hope you enjoyed the tips video. I hope you enjoy playing Space Haven. And with any luck, we will see each other out there in the stars. <laughs> but until then, I'll see you in the next episode of Solid Content. <laughs>